Professional photographers know we don't always get it right when capturing amazing vistas in front of our lenses. Sometimes, for whatever reason, we miscalculate the exposure level and the result is we're left with blown out skies or dark areas where it's hard to make out detail. Ordinarily, these sorts of frames will be heading for the trash can, binned, gone forever. But it doesn't have to be this way. The solution is twofold. Firstly, as pro photographers know, shooting in RAW instead of JPEG will capture more tonal data. But secondly, following the right workflow in a RAW conversion software such as Affinity Photo will stack the odds of rescuing the frame in your favour. Today's cameras are well placed to retain huge amounts of data, with big sensors and wide dynamic ranges, but sometimes we all need that extra nudge of help and this is where Affinity Photo comes up trumps. With the Develop Persona built in, there's no jumping between different programs, so you can edit your RAW file using a number of global and local adjustments in record time. When you open your RAW file in Affinity Photo, you will automatically be transported to the software's Develop Persona. On the right are a number of tabs that will allow you to make global and local adjustments to your RAW image. We're going to start with the Basic tab, so scroll down and tick the Shadows and Highlights box. When the sliders appear, drag the highlights slider to the left and the shadows slider to the right to balance out your exposure and reveal detail. By adjusting the highlights and shadows, you can often leave the frame looking flat and lacking in detail. We can start to correct this and move the process along by further refining the exposure. Increasing the brightness and adjusting the black point sliders will help move the process along further. You can even increase the exposure slider by dragging it to the right. It's at this stage in the raw workflow process we turn our attention to ramping up detail in the frame. Start the ball rolling by dragging the clarity slider to the right. Remember not to overdo this or the effect will compromise image quality. Next, head up and click on the details tab and select the detail refinement box before dragging the radius and amount sliders to control the sharpening in your frame. The exact amount will depend on both your individual image and your personal taste, though we recommend not overdoing the sharpening too much. With the detail sorted, it's time to make some colour edits, and we start by first making a global edit. Go back to the basic tab, scroll down, and you'll see sliders for both saturation and vibrance. Start with the saturation by dragging it to the right, and do the same with the vibrance. You'll already see that what once was a flat image is now starting to burst with colour. Next, locate the white balance box, select it, and just drag the temperature slider to the left slightly. This will help to add some blue tint to our sky, although we're about to supercharge this effect by using a local adjustment. This is where we head to the other side of the interface, and select the Overlay Gradient tool, and the keyboard shortcut for this is G. Start at the top of your frame, hold and drag, and you can see the red marker, which indicates which area of the frame will be affected by this edit. Once you've drawn that out, head back to White Balance, drag the slider to the left some more, and also decrease the exposure to add more detail and you'll see what was once a white colourless sky now has a blue tint to it. You may have to adjust the tint as well to be a little bit green just so it, the sky doesn't go too magenta. Once you're happy with your edits you can head to the top left of the interface and click on the develop button. This will complete the raw workflow and transport you to the photo persona of Affinity Photo. This is where you can make further edits such as curves adjustments. So, head to the Layers bin, select the Adjustments icon. Let's make a quick Curves Adjustment. So I'm going to drag out the points on the dialog box just to really ramp up the colour and detail. And you can also play about with Hue Saturation and increase the blue even more. So 
So let's just quickly click off the final adjustments that we've made. And you'll see that we've added a bit more detail and a lot more color in just a few seconds. Have fun with your raw workflow editing in Affinity Photo, and I'll see you next time.